literally they fired me two weeks before the three month mark. And I, I figured that was God's plan too. To get any family member to support me is the hardest, right? I, I, I can't get that. Um, nobody in my family was an entrepreneur. I didn't have that background. And so I was like, okay, I don't know what to do. How you doing? I want to welcome you to the Content Aesthetic Show, where we take different aesthetic professionals, different med spa owners, and allow them to share their stories so they can help you keep thriving and making an impact in your community. And on today's episode, we have Ashley Harris. Hey, hey, Ashley, how are you? Hey, Dantel, how are you? You here in Atlanta with us? How you I feeling? Am. I'm feeling great, fantastic, blessed, better, best, all I of that. I love it. Yeah. So tell us what it is that you do to make an impact in your community. Okay, well, I'm a licensed esthetician, but I specialize in waxing. So I consider myself like a little glitz fairy. Um, I provide people with the feeling of euphoria that is hard to do without by removing their unwanted body hair. Yes. What made you get into that? Whew. Um, I honestly wanted to be a makeup artist. Yeah. So I went to school to learn makeup artistry yes. when I researched it was like, estheticians are the best makeup artists because they understand skincare. Mm. So I went to school to become an esthetician, got to school and learned absolutely nothing about makeup, but fell in love with everything else that I learned about uh, skincare. I love that. Was that like, uh, how was that transition? Was you always thinking about that or did you have a whole different career path in mind? I had a whole different career path in mind. I honestly thought I was going to be a celebrity makeup artist. Mm. Like you couldn't tell me I wouldn't have been a celebrity makeup artist, um, but it was just God's plan for me to do something else. I ended up naturally being good at waxing and just let that roll and flow. So now I'm a celebrity wax expert. Mm, I love that. And so when it comes to waxing, like what are some of the things that you see that your impact make on the women? Um, just a confidence booster. It really changes the way they feel about themselves um, in their intimate areas. A lot of people have in-ground hairs, discoloration, um, just lots of other things. And I'm able to help them on their journey um, in their intimate areas. So it's super cool to be a part of people's lives in such a unique intimate way. I love that. And so when you got started, did you start in like uh, uh, in your basement? Did you start in like a salon well, suite? Well, it's so funny you said that. So like right after school, I passed my test. I was hired by a large waxing franchise um, and I excelled with them very fast. Within 10 months, I was promoted to peer trainer. Two months after that, I was promoted to district trainer. And two months after that, I was promoted to regional trainer. So my career excelled with them very fast. But I had a lot of family and friends that was like, well, we want to try wax, but we don't want to go all the way to Lincoln Park. They didn't want to go all the way to the north side of Chicago. And I'm a suburbanite. So I started hosting what was called, I called them wax parties, where I would go to my friend's house, family member's house, and set up in their spare, bed spare bedroom or basement. Um, and we would theme them mm. like chicks and chicken. <laughs> Chicks and Chipotle And we would have these wax parties um, And it started out with like Three or four girls and then they would tell a friend And then it was like five or six girls I mean I looked up I would get there at 7 And be there till 2am Oh wow! It became a thing I even started traveling to Michigan To have wax parties Wow! Yeah. And so when you have a thing like Chicks and chicken or chicks and Chipotle Did they really get the food? Yes like literally they would cater Chipotle <laughs> They would cater Chipotle uh, One of my homegirls did it and she went all out. She had a massage therapist, some intimate toy party people came yeah. through. Like we just really made it a thing. And that is actually how I built the clientele for my personal self outside of the clientele that I built for um, with the company that I have been working oh, for. Oh, wow, that's big. So how was those? I know at that time frame, the revenue probably was really, really good for that moment. Yeah, but yeah. like, how was that for you? Like, oh, I throw an event and I'm able to walk away with X, Y, Z. It was crazy um, because I was working like Seven days a week, I would work for the large waxing franchise throughout the week. And on the weekends, I would work for myself. Um, and it allowed me financial freedom. I came from bartending. Yeah. Um, so it was a bit of a pay cut to go to mm -hmm. a regular job um, when I left bartending and transitioned into my new career. So once I started doing the wax parties, I was like, OK, I'm getting bartending yeah. money now. So it, w it was cool. It was I, cool. I love that. And so what was that meant to um what was your mental like when you left that big old organization to start your own? 
It was really scary. I'm going to tell you how it happened. Um, I was at church one Sunday. I honestly hadn't thought about having my own business. I was at church one Sunday and the man of God prophesied entrepreneurship into my future. Mm-hmm. Literally me and Simon, he was like, um, what do you do? I see you working with your hands. Do you work with your hands? I see you being a master at something. Like, are you in school to get your master's degree? Like, what are you doing? Um, and I told him, I was like, well, no, I'm, I'm, I have a trade. And he was like, I just see mastery in your future. He was like, I actually see entrepreneurship in your, pu- in your future. Um, but that prophecy was tied to an action that I had to create, which was to let go of chickens. The sermons was about eagles soaring and chick- chickens never leaving the ground. And he was like, you got like seven chickens holding you down from soaring like an eagle. And I had to make a decision to cut seven people from my life in order for my life to move forward in the way that it did. And I actually had no problem knowing who six was. It was one who I was oh, like I a little you. iffy about. like, um, And I figured it out. And yeah, I was just able to move forward. And um, I, over that time, after that happened, I actually prayed and fasted for 21 days mm. um, for God to give me a plan on what to do. I had no experience in entrepreneurship. Um, nobody in my family was an entrepreneur. Um, I just, I didn't have that background. And so it was like, okay, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was very heavily faith based. So I was like, let me talk to God about it. Yes. And, um, I went on a fast 21 days. It was day 20 when, <laughs> when he <laughs> gave me the name for my business. Um, and I was able to create like a three month plan that I would implement over the next three months and then quit my job so that I could pursue entrepreneurship full time. And did you hit it right on the three month mark? Literally they fired me two weeks before the three month mark. And I, I figured that was God's plan too, because I was yeah. able to get my unemployment to secure <laughs> secure my bag yeah. um to continue to take care of myself and my son yeah. while I made that transition. I so. think that's big. So for me, like in I think it was like twenty nineteen, I got prophesized, right? Mm-hmm. I was at a church and um the um pastor uh the, the prophet she just called me out of nowhere she didn't know me and she said all of the barriers are let down in your life and you're going to go out there and you're going to speak to a lot of people cool. and i'm like cuz at this time i wasn't speaking i've mm-hmm. always been behind the scenes and i enjoy being mm-hmm. behind the scenes and it was so crazy that she prophesied everything that was going to happen. And I attempted to get the recording because, you know, at church, they recorded. Mm-hmm. I paid the five dollars for the recording <laughs> and why it was not recorded. Oh, wow. So it wasn't meant for me to hear, hear, yes, yeah. re- rehear it. You yeah. had to trust God for yes. that moment and what he said. Yes. Yeah. And that was in 2019. And literally a year and a half, I started speaking. And so from 20 J- July 27, uh, 2021. All the way up into uh, top of this year. I stopped speaking for mm-hmm. this year. I spoke at 300 different oh events. Uh, impacted. You don't even know how many people. Big time. That's thousands. so amazing. Uh, and I do big events. Mm-hmm. And I did, man, it's so crazy. And the only reason why I, this year I said I did not want to speak at events is because I want to focus on dominating us this this industry, industry yeah, and you're so, doing it so i don't want to <laughs> crazy i want to just get me i want to focus on behind the scenes and so that's the reason why but i'm gonna go back to it but i know prophesizing is so real it is and so i just wanted to chime in on that because we can get prophesized and not take action <laughs> it's a faith without works is dead and i think a lot of us as christians miss certain aspects that a lot of times God's word is tied to an action that we have to commit. Like we have to trust and believe that prophecy that we receive. We have to trust and believe his word on a daily basis. Um, And without that is nothing like, but when we trust it it, and we have that faith and we put an action to that faith, he is, he is not a man that he should lie. So it has to come to fruition. But it's up to us to put in the work and allow God to do the rest. How important is it for you to see your son, to see his mother as a strong entrepreneur? Oh, my God. So it's crazy you say that because um, there was this one time uh, we both overslept. I was still bartending at the time, still in school to be an esthetician. Um, And he just saw my resilience overall. And he said, um, he, we both overslept, but it was like, he was going to Springfield for his school trip. 
And um, I was like, ain't no way I'm not letting my baby get to his Springfield trip. And I drove him mm-hmm. to Springfield. The school allowed me to do it. I drove him to Springfield. Um, and I stayed and I drove him back. Um, but I only had the free time to do it because I was bartending and I didn't have a nine yeah. to five. Um, but when we got back home, he he appreciated it so much. I'll never forget. I was like super stressed out, maybe a couple of years down the line. And I, I almost was at a place of defeat. And he was just like talking. He, I don't think, I think he knew that I was going through something, but he didn't know what. And I remember him saying to me, like, you're Ashley Harris. You can do anything. Mm. I've seen you do anything. Mm. You do everything. Like, you like superwoman. And he don't know what that did to me. Like, in that moment, he reminded me that I can I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Like just for him to see me in that light, it's always meant something to me. So yeah, super dope. Why was that important to you? Um, Because you just never really know as a person if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing or if what you're being, what you're doing is being perceived the way that it's supposed to be perceived. And so you always have this little thing in the back of your mind, even if you keep going every day, because I'm a person that's going to keep going every day. I, it doesn't matter. I could be frustrated, irritated, um, literally feeling like I want to give up and I'm not a give up type person. So you'll never see me actually do that. But I could feel like I want to do that. Um, but knowing in the back of your that that little something that's back there that that make you feel like you can't knowing that you can and and hearing that from people who mean the most to you um that you think sometimes take you for granted and don't pay you no mind yeah. cuz they see you do this every day so they're like oh you just do it like even my mom when i was just talking to her on the phone she's like go out there and kill it you got it ash you got it i was like girl you ain't here to to interfere with it today so i'll be fine she said no i'm just so proud of you she's like you're beautiful and just to see you you know doing your content and 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 dominating your industry and going after things that i didn't even have the courage to go after like i'm proud of you and i was like oh thanks mom you know like Sometimes we need to hear that, but it means so much more when the people who've watched you sometimes at your lowest points and even at your highest points can see the value in you as a person. I love it. And for you, how important is it for you actually to be working with your mom every day? And I love her personality. (laughs) So I'm just going to tell you that's real big. So listen, my mom has a twin and both of them work with me. What? Yes. Um, Miss Miss Shelley just recently had um she's finishing up a battle with breast cancer. She just finished her radiation. Shout out to TT Shelley. Um congratulations. Thank you Lord for allowing her to trump that little thing that came into her life. Um but it's amazing. And my pastor who's also my aunt was working with me for a little while too. That's the warden. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's amazing. It's amazing to have my family working with me because They genuinely care for me and they genuinely want to see me do well. Um, And because they genuinely want to see me do well, they're there without um, restrictions. Yeah. Like my mom going to answer the phone, go get me lunch, um, put up the inventory. She's going to do everything. Um, And she does it from a place of love. And my aunt Shelly is that way as well. Um, And, and, and my aunt, my my aunt, who's my pastor, she's that way as well. She keeps order. She's extremely orderly. Yeah. Um, and so I needed that. Yes. I needed that. I needed those people to keep me grounded because not only are they, um, they're not just there to work, but because we're a family, they can tell me when I'm wrong. Yes. They can tell me when I'm slacking. Yeah. They can tell me when I need an attitude adjustment. Yes. They can tell me, look, Ashley, you need to get it together. Yeah. This is not it. You know, and, and they can tell me from... A place of love and a place of spirituality because they're also my pastors and my, you know, my mom, my my oldest aunt is my pastor. My mom is our assistant pastor at my church. And then my aunt is um, a pastor at her church as well. Mm -hmm. My mom's twin sister. Ministry runs in my family. And so everything that we do, they believe that we're supposed to do it decent and in order. I've been taught that my my entire life. 
And so they keep me in check. Yes. So it's nice. It's nice. It's fun. It's very family oriented. The clients love it. Yes. They call mama mama. They call T T T T. And so everybody loves it because now they feel like they're a part of our family. So it makes it very comfortable for them to come there for their services. That is extremely big. And the reason why is I'm from Chicago, right? And to to get any family member to support me is the hardest, right? I, I, I can't get that. Couldn't get that to save my life. If I had a gazillion dollars, still probably because it's like, no, nah, that's your thing. That ain't mm-hmm. my thing. So for you to have your family, first of all, queens and women to be behind you so you can build your village is powerful. It is. I'm and grateful. And so never <laughs> take it for granted. I'm grateful. I, 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 what happens is sometimes us as business leaders – Sometimes we can be like, we can overlook things. We can overlook people, emotions. We can overlook people, um, credit, the little things that they Mm. need. And I think appreciation is probably going to always be the biggest form of currency Mm -hmm. for people that support our dreams. And sometimes we could be moving so fast and we forget that. And so I just want you to know that that's special. It is. It's extremely special. It is. And so cherish that, but also show that. Mm-hmm. Show the family um, bond. Show that because they don't see that, mm-hmm. especially in our community. So I think that should be another element that you show in your content. I think so, too. You just definitely, um, that's that's a great thing to do, I, especially because everybody knows them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's so funny that, I've been at my studio for a little over five years now and clients say it's two of them when they finally see them together. They're like, I never realized it was two of them. They're twins. And it's it's always so funny. Like, girl, you lay. Um, but yeah, people, people love that. And I love that too. I think it's, it's unique. And I always tell people like, Oh no, I have twin receptionists and they're my mom and my aunt. And, and I love it. It's dope. So yes, that's something I, I will start to implement. So, what would you say to uh, a young black um, aesthetic professional that might not, that might want to give up today? I want you to look in this camera and I want you to say something that will encourage them to keep going. Remember your why. As long as you have a reason why you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, hold on to that. And make sure your why is a strong why. Because if you're str- if your why is weak, your passion is going to be just as weak as your why. Your your go hard is going to be just as weak as your why. Um, I don't have a choice at this point. Like I cannot fail. Yeah, my doors cannot close. I I cannot say no. Um, number one because God said yes. So have a why. Have a reason. Have a foundation. Um, know who you are and what you stand for. Love on you, get selfish with you, get grounded with you. So that way you always stay true to you. And in staying true to you, you stay true to others. And that's just super important that you know your why, know who you are and go go crazy because you got something to prove, not to other people, but to yourself. It's for you. I love that. And Ashley, if you can single out one of your superpowers, what would it be and why? I'm a chameleon. <laughs> mm, break it down. I know how to adapt. I know how to change. I know how to blend. I know how to stand out. I I know how to turn it on and turn it off. And um, I think a lot of people don't have that um, or don't know how to use it. They mm-hmm. haven't tapped into it and how to use it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to be able to. I think that's important because you want to be relatable. Um People want to be able to find some way to connect with you. And if people are disconnected from you, they don't feel a way. They don't feel like they can get something from you. But when you can connect with people, different people on different levels, um, you got something. I love that. And Ashley, I want to let you know I'm proud of you, first of all, for believing in your dreams, for going all in, but making your part, your family a part of your dreams. Um, And. When you get in the room, you 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 take over the room. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Um, and I think that's a powerful thing. Um, and your energy, your spirit, um, the way you treat other people is extremely well. Oh, so thanks. just keep up it, keep up the hard work, um, and making a difference, especially for our city. 
Yeah. You know, um, because because <laughs> cause it, it, could, it, it could be a different story. And so I just want to thank you for that uh, because you. you're encouraging other queens, other women, other young women to do something with their life. Yeah. And so I want to thank you and for being an amazing mother. Oh, well. thanks. Uh-huh. You got that too, though. Like uh, real quick. I don't know if you remember when I met you. Yeah. I was like, I didn't know what it was about you. Yeah. You had a light. And I was like, it's yeah. something about him. Yeah. And when I heard you talk, I was like, you a man of God. Yeah. And and he has his hand on you. He got his light shining on you. So you making him proud. Do what you're supposed to do for him. And he going to give you everything else. I with love that. that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, Ashley. you're welcome. <laughs> I want to thank you for tuning in to the Content Aesthetic Show. And I want you to understand it is okay to build, have support, but it's also okay to let people go. And when God give you that message, don't let it go on deaf ears. Because if you don't receive the message, you're going to be stuck in that position that you're in. And you're going to be wondering why you haven't grown. It's because you wasn't open to receive. And anytime you're not open to receive, you're not open to grow. And so I want you to take this episode and I want you to use it to nourish your heart, your mind, your spirit, your business, and keep on thriving. I am Dontel Antonio, and this is the Content Aesthetic Show, and I want to thank you for tuning in.